Welcome back, young students of chemistry. So if you listened to the recording um, at the beginning of uh, Unit 3 on bonds, chemical bonds, uh, this is kind of just a recap of what you learned there. We are still in the compound formula. So just a reminder, in chemistry we have symbols. That was Unit 2. The symbols that are on the periodic table and what can the periodic table tell us about them. We have formulas. That's when elements react with each other and that's where we still are. That's where we were in Unit 3. That's where we are now here in Unit 4. And then next unit we start to talk about equations. It's very important that you know if I'm asking you for a formula what I am asking you for. So as a reminder, we um, have two types of compounds, ionic and covalent. This is the same stuff that we went over at the beginning of last unit, if you watched that recording. So ionic compounds, we call them formula units. They have high melting points. They are electrolytic when they are molten or aqueous. And that is because they have ions that are free to move. And whenever there are ions that are free to move, they will conduct electricity. They are solid at room temperature because of their very strong intermolecular force or interparticle attraction. They have crystalline structures because they are not molecules. So they don't have a particular shape, but they have a structure that forms based on the size of the ions and how many ions are going to be attracted um, in that, what is called a lattice structure. And most ionic compounds are soluble in water. Covalent compounds, we call those molecules. They have low melting points. They can be solid, liquid, or gas at room temperature. Um, and that really depends on the strength of its intermolecular force. Things that have hydrogen bonding, those polar molecules that have special hydrogen uh, bonding or special dipole forces, those are more likely to be the things that are liquid at room temperature. Um, those things that have really weak particle attractions, like London dispersion forces, those are the things that are going to be gas at room temperature. And because they have these weak inter-particle inter, uh, attractions of dipole, dipole, and dispersion, they are volatile, which means little pieces of them kind of break off and then fly up your nose and we smell it. They are also non-electrolytic. They do not have ions. In order for something to conduct electricity, it must have ions. So again, a compound formula, this is still where we are. It tells us a couple of things. It tells us what elements are in the compound, in this case, sulfur and oxygen. It tells us how many atoms of each of those elements are in the compound. In this case, one atom of sulfur, three atoms of oxygen. And it also tells us the way the compound is bonded, i.e., is it covalent or ionic? We know that because sulfur is a non-metal, that this sulfur trioxide is covalently bonded. And because we know that it's covalently bonded, it tells us about the aforementioned properties. So um, if I'm asking you which, is a, which compounds are electrolytic, I'm really asking you how many of those compounds are ionic, or which of the compounds are ionic. If I'm asking you which are volatile, I'm really asking which are covalent, and then which are probably soluble. Now, you know that that depends on polarity, right? So we know that ionic compounds are soluble. And then if you were asked whether a specific compound that is covalent is soluble, you'd have to do the dot structure. You'd have to determine whether the bonds are polar, and then do the dot structure to determine whether the molecule is polar. And if that molecule is polar, it would be soluble in water. So this is just a little reminder of those things that you were supposed to get at the beginning of last unit. I saw in your notebooks that many of you did not get that. So here we go again. It does not go away. All right, that's all I need from you. Be ready to hit it tomorrow.